What's up, folks? Welcome back to another episode of Mostly Superheroes. I'm your host, Logan, and today's episode is all about the boys, folks, um, on Amazon Prime. Um, Been excited to talk about this show since season two got announced. We've been teasing it out on the show um, on the regular last week. So today is um, September uh, 9th. And um, they released The Boys early last week, season two. So it was originally set for September 4th. I think they dropped it, what, one day, two days early, three episodes. So, you know, we're I'm diving right in here, but just kind of, you know, let's, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. First of all, um, welcome back to the show. Let's just, you know, little little politeness goes a long way. I want to say, hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for coming back. Um, but yeah, today's all about the boys. So before we jump into season two and the way we're going to do this is going to be different than what I've done in the past. It's also going to be different than just maybe other reviews you've done. It's going to be a combination of a review, kind of like a breakdown, um, and also a live watch. So I'm going to talk about season one real quick, just a very quick recap, basically from my memory, just kind of where the show left off. And then what we're going to do today is we're going to watch. I'm going to watch. I can't put it on here, you know, legally for you to watch. You just got to go check it out on Amazon Prime. That's where the boys lives, if you don't know. Um, and we're going to watch episode three all the live straight through. So I'm going to watch it. You're going to watch me watch it. But as I do it, it's going to you're not going to be able to hear the audio from the show or anything. Um, it's going to be me talking through my thoughts on the show. It's going to help me recap what happened in episodes one and two. So I can say like, oh, this is what happened in the previous episode. That's what they're talking about here. You'll see. You'll kind of get a feel for how it goes. And after that, they're dropping these episodes. There's some there's some fans upset about this. I'm, I'm kind of in, on the fence still. Um, but the boys season two is going to be a weekly release. I think it's every Friday. So they dropped the first three episodes season two, and now it's going to be every week. Here comes another one. Um, for me personally, like having a podcast where I talk about shows, it's almost kind of nice to <laughs> take it one bite at a time and do one episode at a time. That being said, I'm a binger just like probably most of you out there. So we'll see how I actually feel once this gets going. All right, so season one, uh, the boys, let's just talk about where we left off and kind of the premise of the show. First of all, first and foremost, the show is fantastic. Um, you know, when this season one, I gave five out of five stars back when we were, were rating it, uh, when it first came out, we were rating it. Um, we haven't really come up with a great rating system on this show yet. We've been using like the 10 scale, the five scale. For now, let's just go with five because that's where I started. I mean, I said five stars. Season two, I have high expectations, um, but where the storyline goes and where it opens up. So just if you're just kind of wondering where did season one leave off um, high level. So superheroes are real. They work for a company named Vought. Turns out they're all evil and kind of having their own agendas. Um, you get Billy Butcher, who's on the hunt to kill these soups because they did something to his wife. You know, we they, um, have, per him, his wife was raped by the main uh, superhero slash villain of the story, Homelander. Um, and his mission is to get this, you know, get this guy killed, bring down all the soups with him. Um, and a part of that is also uh, showing the world the truth that this compound V is the reason everyone has superpowers, superpowers, um, and they're not born with them as we're led to believe. Um, so there's kind of those two angles throughout the whole season one, you know, this compound V that they're trying to, the boys, you know, that's the group of people in the show, uh, Billy Butcher and uh, Huey, um, uh, the other folks. I forget their names, but we'll we'll get them as we dive into season two. because we're going to talk about it live. Um, just jumping ahead in season one show leaves with Billy Butcher uh, finding out his wife is not dead. She uh, did have some kind of relationship with Homelander. We found out it, it looks like she could have been raped. It also looks like she may have just slept with him. Something we're all wondering, I think. Um, and we find out that big spoiler for end of season one, just all spoilers around on this show right now. If you can't tell, we're talking about the whole show, the whole episode. So big spoilers for season one and season two. Um, Homelander has a son with Billy Butcher's wife. 
and um, that's the big reveal at the end. Um, and then the boys, Huey and the rest of the crew, including including Billy, really, um, even though he's off with Homelander, they're on the run from the government because um, they found out that, you know, they had something to do with uh, Translucent's death. Turned out like Huey actually kill, killed Translucent, one of the seven, one of the seven superheroes that's part of Vought. Um, and they're on the run. So those are the two big cliffhangers. That's where they leave us in season one. Um, and season two, guys, I, I really don't want to waste a lot of time here. I just want to dive right in. But again, we're doing it a little bit differently today. We're not going to talk about each of these three episodes. We're going to watch episode three right now. I'm putting it on live again. You don't want to hear it or see it. Um, and I'm going to give you my raw thoughts and take on the show. And then we'll continue to do some kind of weekly review, whether it'll be a live watch or maybe we get some of my friends in here and we'll talk about the show and talk about our thoughts on it. Or I might just do like a, a, a episode breakdown from memory. Like you've seen me do with uh, doom patrol and the umbrella Academy. All right. With that guys, we're going to get this going and we're going to start it off with episode three of the boys on Amazon prime. If you'd like to follow along, I welcome you to do it. Um, I'll do a countdown here and we're going to hit play. I shouldn't have to pause or anything throughout the episode. I plan on going straight through. Um, but if I do pause or anything like that, I'll be sure to let you know and make sure you know what like time marker we're at. So if you would like to follow along as you know, you might be familiar with how these live watches work. Uh, you're welcome to do so. So with that being said, I have it pulled up here on my Apple TV on Amazon Prime. We're going to start it in three, two, one. All right, guys, we're playing. Cool. So um, just you're going to get my feedback throughout the whole episode. So this is an Amazon Prime original show. Um, I do know that there are comics, so there is some origin, original content out there somewhere this came from. Um, but, you know, I don't know much about that, to be honest. I'd love for you guys to reach out. Tell me about it. All right. So this episode opens up with a really funny. I say funny. It's just a kind of like a, a raw um, um, I'm sorry, not a Raleigh, an older music video, Billy Joel, <laughs> and Huey's listening to it. Um, Huey, this whole season so far, is definitely on the struggle bus of where he's fitting in all this. Um, you can see it here on his face. He's just beaten down. He's tired. He's been on the run. He lost his girlfriend, Robin, in, ep in season one, episode one, you know, within the first, I think, like 30, 20 minutes. You know, that was when A-Train ran straight through her. All right. Billy here, he, you know, he's the one that brought in Dewey to this whole world as put him on this revenge seeking thing. Well, in the process, he's fallen to you. He's fallen in love with Starlight. Right. Um, and we've got a little taste of their relationship during this. They're staying in contact. They're still kind of against Vaught. They're trying to, you know, find Compound V. All that is still going on. Um, but he is really still struggling now, you know, after all the things that took place in season one, where do I fit in all this? And his biggest problem right now is with Billy. And you're going to see right here. Here we go. Boom. Huey punches Billy in the face. And really, you think that's it? But then he wants to attack him. It seems like full on, full on attack. Um, so he's really just struggling with where Billy, where he sits with Billy. Billy's out for himself. We all know that he always has been. He's out saving his wife and that's all. All right. Um, this guy's name, I always forget this guy's name and I, I should just look it up while we're sitting here. Well, oh, you know what I love on Amazon? You can put up, pull up the, uh, oh, I already accidentally paused for a half a second, guys. Don't worry. You didn't, didn't miss anything, but you can pull up like straight, I believe on Amazon prime. It'll tell you who's in the show. Um, so yeah, we'll come back around and make sure we get some of these names, right? So in this episode, um, you know, we're reeling from Billy just returning in episode two. He wasn't even in episode one. Um, and as we know from the cliffhanger, he in, in season one, Billy's very much still on the hunt for his wife. And when we got dropped in season one, he's there with Homelander. He sees Homelander's kid. He sees Becca and he knows she's alive. But now we find out in season two. Homelander took him away from there immediately, dropped him somewhere, and he's on the hunt now for her. So in doing that, he's enlisted the help of the boys again. Of course, right? This is why Dewey's so upset with Billy, really. He's like, you just are using us at the end of the day. 
Um, but Billy also is trying to tap into Grace here. I think that's her name. She was like the the character that Billy got convinced to. Like she came to Billy the same way Billy came to Dewey, right? To Huey. I'll probably call him Huey and Dewey the whole episode. So we got a little bit of that backstory again. Um, and then this episode, we're getting um, a look at um, the young. What's this is where I have to get their names better. The young Asian actress is playing the. Um, she plays the, the the soup terrorist that they found in season one that the boys found. She's now like on their team. But now we have an issue with her brother, who is a soup terrorist because he's been like brainwashed and the boy and the boys have now kidnapped um, her, her brother. So here we are in this scene. Um, this is what something I'm going to say real quick about this uh, Amazon prime app. These two are going to talk to each other here and I'm going to actually this time around put on the subtitles because uh, Amazon prime, just a heads up. There were no automatic subtitles during this part. And if you are familiar with other streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, um, I'm not sure if Disney Plus does it, but they um, will do automatic subtitles if someone's not speaking English. The show didn't do that. I watched this whole scene until at the end when I finally was like, we got to put on subtitles, I think. I think they're talking. And they are. Um, basically, what's happening here is they're talking about their childhood, how they grew up together how they look after each other. So this is very much a brother and sister relationship. Um, I haven't said her name yet. It's I, I know I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> there you go. Billy Butcher is his name. If you are wondering why I'm laughing. Um, let me see if I can get her name real quick. Okay. So we got Kenji is her brother. And then her name is. Kimiko. All right. Um, and I paused again. I'm, I'm at five Oh three. If you're following along five minutes, three seconds. So uh, Kimiko is, is trying to talk her brother into not being a soup terrorist. Um, they have this relationship for me. Honestly, I, I, I don't want to say I don't care about this relationship, but it's definitely like you had to, I'm glad they gave a call back to season one because we did see a little bit of her life where she was living in some camp somewhere. And these two got, you know, they're, they're refugees basically. It, it seems like, um, and now they're soup terrorists. They've got the powers. So she's trying to tell them that, that, you know, we're here to help you. Let's see how um, um, if we can all just hang out. Billy was intent on killing this guy because this is the deal that Billy makes with. I believe her name is is Grace. I believe to say, if I bring you a soup terrorist, will you help me find my wife? Because, again, he's looking for Becca. You know, that's all he's looking for. That's it. That's his mission right now. So there's this there's they're keeping the brother captive. Kimiko's brother captive um and they're trying and now Kamiko's trying to convince her brother to be like hey don't be a soup terrorist come work with us because he's a really powerful soup very powerful um he can he is telekinesis basically he can move things with his mind um but like on a like pretty really big stuff um, okay, so here we go. What we got next? So that's the scene with Kimiko and her brother. They got him, you know, being captive. Uh, moving along here. Um, so A Train is back. And I believe that happened in the last episode. Um, and it was really, it was a shock that he came back. So the last time we left A Train, you know, going back to season one real quick. Right now he's in the club. If you're watching along, we're, He's he's you know, he's back. Um, but in season one, he had a heart attack at the end when he was confronting um, Starlight and and Huey. And now we're like, if you're watching and following along right now, he's just leaving the club. He's been there all night. He's like almost having a heart attack again. He's grabbing his chest. Sorry, jumping around a little bit. He was in a coma at the end of season one. This episode, he's he's still struggling with his chest pains. He's very much alive. He confronted Starlight. Um, it seems like they're going to be, you know, they're going to have more confrontations, I believe, throughout this episode. All right, here we go. Next scene now we're we're watching. If you're watching along, uh, we have Homelander. And the theme so far with Homelander and Becca and, you know, Billy's ex-wife, whatever you want to call her wife. And. Homelander's son. Homelander's like trying to get to know his son. 
like he's like hanging out at this chick's house and um he's like playing catch with him he's wanting him to use his powers more he's like do you even know how to use your powers the kid's like not good at baseball and stuff he's like having a catch with him and the kid can't even catch it um in this scene here um the becca is doing everything she can to hold on to it like any kind of normalcy um and telling you know Hol- homelander it's time for spanish for for this for this kid and homelander says no we're gonna go outside and 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 teach him how to to be a, a superhero so we're not quite totally sure what these powers are of this kid, right? Um, we have seen his eyes light up, but and we are led to believe that he is a distinct descendant of Homelander, so that he um, he must have his powers. So we're going to find out more about that. So now we jump over to back to the Seven Tower, is what I'll call it. And here, what's happening is they're pitching a movie of the Seven that's supposed to come out like later this year. I mean, this is exactly what would happen, right? I mean, think about how superheroes movies are superhero movies are right now. Um, this is exactly what's happening. They they have the uh, they have a storyboard. I mean, this is great. You know, if you work in like the in in, in the business, um, it's funny how like they how much detail they put into the storyboards and how this would work and who's in it. Um, and they're basically pitching them on this movie. It's a weird scene. It's funny. Half the superheroes are interested half or not um and here we're gonna get a little bit more from stormfront so why they're doing this little pitch here stormfront she's the newest member of the seven she's great um so far you know we, we've seen her in two episodes basically what we know about her she's kind of like storm right from x-men and has like you know that's what we're you know we've seen a little bit of lightning power with her hands but honestly we haven't seen her go like all out quite yet what we have seen her do is challenge Vought, challenge Homelander, you know, kind of like a loud and proud person that's not here to play with the system. Um, her and Starlight have some dialogue, I believe, in the last episode, and, and it continues into this one. Uh, this is funny in the, in the <laughs> when they're talking about the movie, um, they reference Hamilton. It was fine. Um, I, I feel like they've re- referenced a couple things in here, but um, whatever. So here is Stormfront um, just being more, just more of her, right? This is what she's been the whole show. Like, I'm here to say something. I have a very strong opinion. Um, she's here to break through. And now she has major thoughts on the movie. It's like, I, she wants more Stormfront in the movie. She talks about um, the flaws in the plot. <laughs> and this guy that pitched it is just like, I thought you guys were just here to like nod and say like, okay. But no, she's she's rocking the boat. Um. So Starlight, they're showing her a little bit too in here. You know, she's sitting, um, she's sitting all right. Her and Huey have been staying in contact. It seems like maybe the romantic buzz has fallen a little bit, um, but it does seem like she's still trying to like do the right thing, help Stewie with like revealing Compound V is how superheroes get their powers. Um, but still, we'll see. Perfect timing, right? This is where we get to. The headline, uh, one of the he- the major headlines of this episode, and really the first three episodes, and really the entire season two, this is going to be a, an ongoing topic now. Ashley just gets Ashley's the, um, she's like the manager, you know, the 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 main account person that like tries to wrangle all the superheroes, keep everyone in line. Homelander threatened her, said like you're going to do what I say. Well, regardless, she just got a, a notification on her phone saying that she's going to get with crisis management PR. She's talking to Edgar, the leader of Vought right now, asking him, like, is it true? Is it true? So obviously something big has gone down, right? Or I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead. If you, you know, hopefully if you're watching this at this point, you're not watching it for the first time with me talking over it. Um, and you've already seen it. Spoiler alert, though. Here we go. Compound V. Giving super ha- po- super heroes their powers is out in the public. So here we go. This is breaking news. This is huge. This is um, superheroes are not born, but made. This is this is crazy. I, I expected this to maybe come. They kind of teased at it in episode one and two of this season. Um, Edgar talked about it. And Starlight is just so happy. A-Train, here we go, is not happy. 
Um, he's the he, so in episode two. See, this, is, this is when it's nice to call back what happened in episode two. A train comes back. He basically calls out Starlight, saying, "I know everything you did. You tried to kill me, but she's like, well, I also saved you." And he caught her with the compound V, and she basically told him, um, "I, you're not going to do anything about this because you're, you know, you're you're too deep in this now, and you killed your girlfriend." Remember her, the girl with the claws. He killed her with heroin. Um, and this guy's upset that he kind of called that she did this with that compound V. She's ousted the or outed whatever the the Vought crew. Um, and now it's going to be interesting, right? Like, what's Vought going to do with this news? How are they going to talk about compound V? How do you address this in a public forum? You know, there's a PR play here. Um, you know, superheroes are not born, but made. This is a huge thing. People have been taught basically their whole lives. I think they say in season one, uh, superheroes have been around for, I don't know, what, 80 years or something. And now this is really cool. This is where we find out which of the super heroes knew about this and which did not. And then, like, how do they react? Right. Because this is going to give you huge insight into um, like who these people are. And they start with the deep. The deep, uh, this guy. Let's look at his name real quick. This having this, the names on Amazon is really handy, honestly. Um, so the guy that plays the deep, that's, um, Chase Crawford. He's in gossip girl. Um, for those that you are following along, every time I look at that, I do have to pause it for a half a second, but we're at 1435. If you're following, following along. Um, and he's talking about the first time he got his power. So the deep, if you don't know, is basically the Aquaman on the show. He can talk to fish. He wears like an Aquaman outfit. Um, and He's like really reacting to this news very poorly. He's like, I remember the day that I was in the aquarium and the fish were screaming for help. <laughs> Not to laugh at, at that, but it's, I mean, you have to laugh at it. I mean, he has these really funny moments about talking to fish. I think in season one, he's like, you know, that dolphin like falls in love with him. Um, We get black noir. So um, he did not know, obviously he's crying. And then now we have Huey finding out the news, literally on the news. And he's on the phone with. He's on he's leaving Starlight a voicemail saying, like, we did it. Uh, this is amazing. He's almost in tears. He's. Mother's milk. That's that's the uh, that's the black guy's name, right? That's the 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 partner of Billy. Uh, I forgot that they call him mother's milk. Um. But anyway, there's there. This is where I was really I was like, is he going to be upset? Is he going to be happy? All right. Well, Mother's Milk is really crazy happy. I'm going to get this guy's name right too, real quick. Oops. Sorry, guys. This is you know, you're, we're we're watching live here. Okay, so uh, Mother's Milk. That's what they call him. Laz Alonzo is the actor's name. All right, we're at 1601 if you're following on, and we're going to pause real quick, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. Um, so we are um, watching episode three of The Boys, if you're following along. Um, don't worry, we're, we're still paused at the moment. Um, if you want to get your TV ready or if you're watching, um, we are at 1607 um, before we hit play again. Um, just want to say, you know, we're, we're moving right along here, and... Um, you know, I'm going to try to keep in mind that not everybody's watching this because if you if you don't know, you don't have to watch a long way to follow it. So I'm going to do, you know, I can I'm going to do my best to to talk about it, you know, outside of just watching the episode. But either way, you know, if you like if you have the time and you're in front of a TV, um, by all means, follow along. But like I said, not not necessarily a requirement. All right. Well, with that, let's not waste any more time. Let's just jump back in. So we're at 1607. We're hitting play in three, two, one. Okay, so we're with the boys right now, and they are they just found out about Compound V being outed. The world knows that they've been making it. Vought Vot has been making it all this time, and everyone's happy. You know, we got Mother's Milk that's happy, and um, just while we're here, let's get um, the other guy's name because I just don't want to be wondering what it is the whole time. So I'm paused again real quick. Um, and in this scene, we have 
Here he is. Tomer Capone. He plays Frenchie. How can you forget that name, Frenchie? Sorry about that, guys. So resuming the video, we're at 1630. Billy is the only one, of course, that's like not thrilled about this news. Something he's been working for this whole time. He's the one that got uh, Huey involved. And now he's yelling at him saying, we have a soup terrorist below deck. That's the Kimiko's brother. They could go to jail right away. Um, they're, they're still on the run. Nothing's over yet. So he's telling everybody like, hey, everyone, calm down. Like, we're not we're not there just yet. Again, just this. It, Huey says it too. You couldn't just let me have this one thing. Um, and these and Frenchie and Mother's Milk tell him, you know, don't worry about it. It's it's just that's just Billy. That's how he is. And it is true. He's just causing another divide. But it's definitely more of this Billy and and Huey colliding instead of like working together. And it's definitely causing turmoil in the team. So more to, more on that later. Um, so here we are. We got Homelander. He's back with the sun. Homelander doesn't seem to know anything about this compound V business. He's off at this place where, um, where Becca lives with her son. And I didn't want to spoil it. I think it may have happened in the last episode, so I'll go and say it. But I do know that Becca and her son are living on some compound. And it looks like it's where that doctor forgot his name, but the doctor that like in season one that raised um, Homelander that had to do with making all these soups. That's where they are. So now Homelander's on top of this house with his son and he's telling him like, you got to try to fly. It's, it's enough's enough. You're not using any powers. And he says, you're my son. You're just like me. And the kid's like, I'm not, I don't think I am. I don't think I'm anything like you. Um, so it's like, you know, there's this, there's this, you're trying to, you're starting to find out that this kid seem like he's like a pretty good kid. And he's not just listening to Homelander, you know, the number one superhero in the world. Also, I don't know if it's clear how much he knows about Homelander, but I'll tell you right now, he's about to find out because Homelander's <laughs> gonna take this kid. He's gonna give him a fast track lesson to fly in. Um, just to give you a little bit of uh, heads up here. I mean, it's like a 12 year old kid, right? <laughs> Calls him dad. Homelander kind of takes a moment and says, that's real nice. Well, go ahead. Throws him off the roof, guys. Um, <laughs> he throws this like 12, 13 year old kid off the roof. He does not look okay. He's like laying flat on the ground. The mom comes running out. Homelander being so much of a sociopath and being so far removed from what it is to be human. He, he says like, he's fine. He's brushing it off. Like he just tripped and fell. But to my surprise, he is like totally fine. Like he's like, I didn't know if he's like, I thought I was like, he might break a leg or something. This is where we don't really know the extent of his powers. Right. And, um, you know, like I was saying earlier, we get a feeling this kid's kind of a good kid. He's not listening to Homelander so much. Well, now Homelander and Becca are going to come to a head because she, she, he just threw his his son, her son, off a roof, and the kid does not like that they're fighting. Homelander's grabbing his mom, grabbing Becca, and here comes the kid. You can feel it boiling. He pushes Homelander down to the ground, and his eyes are red. The little boy. I miss it. Keep saying the little boy. I don't know his name, but Homelander's son. Eyes are red. He pushes him down. So this is huge, right, guys? This is almost maybe like the first tease at a weakness we see for Homelander. Not a weakness per se, but definitely like a threat, right? Like if this kid truly does have all the same powers and maybe he's a good kid, then maybe he could be the one to like step up and put Homelander in his place. We'll see. So that's where we leave off with uh with Homelander's kid and, the, and, and Becca. They go back in. And now we're going to go check back in with the boys. All right. So here we are. Um, we're in the boat. So the, right now what's happening with the boys is they're out on this boat and they're like three miles offshore with Kimiko's brother, who is the soup terrorist. Right. And the idea here is Billy's going to trade this to Grace, who works, I guess, for the government or something in exchange for um, help to get find out where Becca is and get her get his wife back. Um, so here in this scene, we have Frenchie kind of playing the same type of role as he did in season one with Kimiko. And sorry if I'm butchering that name. Um, 
but he he showed her like kindness, right? They got her in captivity. He shows her kindness. Well, now look how that worked out. It all seems like they're kind of a family. All right, so he's doing the same thing here. He's like giving the brother some soda. He brings him a snack. He's explaining to her like, I'm here to help your sister. So I'm a good person. We're not like, we don't necessarily have to do this a bad way. Um, like I don't, Frenchie doesn't want to tra- turn him in. You know that he doesn't want to just trade people like their pawns. Frenchie's always like the voice of compassion and empathy. I feel like in the group, um, you know, someone sometimes to a fault, but like you have to have that in a group where you have a Billy Butcher that's focused on uh, getting whatever he needs. And then you have Mother's Milk, who's like an in-between, right, of Frenchie and Billy. He's like, I'm compassionate. I want to do the right thing, but I'll do anything for my family. And, you know, so we're getting a little bit of that, you know, just playing out these characters, reminding you who they are. And then, like I said, to a fault, this is where Frenchie kind of makes a mistake. He lets his guard down. Um, and you kind of even think that maybe this this guy's coming around, you know, Kimiko's brother, the soup terrorist. Um, but we're going to find out that he's he's kind of he kind of is. He's kind of not. Um, but he's going to try to escape. Um, this part of the story is, again, it's like I, I it's like what's going to go. Where's it going to where's it going to go with this brother? You know, like um, like where that's what kind of what you're thinking to yourself is we're only episode. You know, this is episode three. You know, a lot of season left. Is this going to be a guy that sticks around? Is this going to be, you know, another character that they build out and, and bring into the crew? Um, you know, we're going to find out as we go through the episode. Um, so this is, yeah, they really play this part out. Like, again, I, I don't want to say I don't care about this part, but it's like uh, it's hard to follow, especially when subtitles don't automatically work. I'm glad that we actually got them turned on this time. Um, so Frenchie's going to go back up and see the boys. This guy uses his powers. He gets a little bit of his finger out of the duct tape and uses his powers to get this um, can over to him to cut the duct tape to, so he can cut cut loose. So after this, this is where things start heating up for the boys. I like um, there's some really fun stuff that happens here on the water. Um, this guy's fun, I guess, using his telekinesis powers. Um, again, they really drag this scene out. Uh, but, you know, a lot of episodes to get through this season. We got, what, three in the first week. And there's going to be, what, one a week for the, the next ten. Um, you know, we're early days here, so we're going to we're going to see where it goes. Wrap it up, guys. Here we go. Next scene. All right, cool. So this is where people are reacting to the news that Compound V is out there. And here we go. Maeve had no idea. Really, the general consensus, if you're asking me, it seems like most people did not know. You know, Homelander knew. Starlight knew because Huey told her. But like Maeve's here. She's talking to um, her friend. What's her friend's name? like elena or something like that so this is you know let's talk, talk about Maeve for a minute um this is her i say love interest from the season one and she's on the phone i think her name's elena i think we're gonna find out here in a second regardless she's just talking to her about you know finding out that her powers were given to her her dad's on the news saying like i had no idea this happened she's like bullshit you knew like some like you were given a deal just like probably the rest of the parents right this is very similar to what they're what they're showing us here is you remember in season one, Starlight found out the news and her mom denied it for the longest time until Starlight pushed her to, you know, no, you need to tell me the truth. Very similar here. Um, also, what's happening here is Maeve is terrified, just like the rest of the people in the show of Homelander, that she he's going to go kill this Elena person. Here you go. He, he asked her like straight up. She's like, okay, he doesn't know. He didn't hear the phone call. He doesn't know who I was talking to. And he says, okay, cool. Who's Elena? I think it's coming here in a second. Let's see if I get this name right. Come on. It's funny whenever you anticipate it, you think it's coming sooner than it is, but here we go. Well, he's pretending that he really gives a, sh- gives a shit about her. And he's like playing mind games here. Pat in her hand. He's like, I'm here for you. This is all so crazy. I can't believe it. Because he has to react to the news. All right, here we go. Who's Elena? So, like, all of that's a show. This shows, again, how much of a sociopath this guy is. This actor. I'm going to definitely say his name because he's awesome. I just followed him on Instagram recently. Um, 
man, this thing is super touchy. Like, okay, here we go. Um, Anthony Starr is the one that plays Homelander. Um, Maeve is played by Dominique McEl Elliot Elligot. I'm probably, I'm definitely, it's one of the other. There's a G in there. Um, and just if you're following along here, guys, we're we're at twenty six twenty five. Um, and Homelander is is you know he's so terrifying that she's like, is, she, is he going to kill my a friend of mine? Um, also though, he is just now learning of the news that um, Compound V is public. So we'll see how he reacts to that. I mean, he obviously already knew, so probably not much to happen there. All right, so here we are. We're back on the boat. We're back with the boys. And everything seems to be going as planned until a helicopter shows up to the boat. It's NYPD, and it's because Billy stole the boat, right? You know, something stupid. This is the boat that they teased out on Instagram. My big wet dream. Funny boat name. Saw Amazon. Prime even commenting on Instagram about this boat name. Just real funny. All right. So now the <laughs> super, the soup terrorist, Kimiko's brother, um, has gotten loose. His hands get free. That's like his big thing. And he accidentally here destroys the helicopter. Like it's a piece of, like it's a paper plane, guys. Paper plane. <laughs> um, so like he goes in the water. Huey is like, hey, we got to save these people. What do you think Billy says? You all know the answer. Billy's like, nope, we got to get out of here. There's a, a police helicopter in the water. This is, again, where Huey and Billy are, are bumping heads. Huey's trying to do the right thing. He throws out a life preserve to the helicopter as if that's going to do anything. But... um. Billy and Mother's Milk. Mother's Milk is giving him hard looks right now. Like you gotta, you gotta pay attention. Um, and what he's, you know, we'll we'll get to it in a minute. I'm not gonna jump ahead too much, but you know, we're we're it's just more on this relationship of Billy and Huey. Um, all right, so now we're checking in with the deep. I was excited to talk more about him because I, I'll be honest, this part of the storyline has been a little confusing to me. Um, feel free to to chime in, comment with your thoughts. Um, love for someone to clear it up for me. But he's having still issues from season one. You know, he's got insecurity issues. Because of that, he made he forced Starlight to give him a blowjob the first day of being in the seven in season one. That's the first episode, I think, first or second episode. And I think first episode because it's when you really get a feel for like who the people are. Well, then you have this doctor. And this arrow hero, this guy that shoots bow and arrows. All right. So these guys are all dealing with the fact that compound V made them who they are. But outside of that, these two have been helping him with like psychology and how to like, I guess she's like a psychiatrist. He's given he being the arrow shooting hero. He gave, um, I think it was in episode two, the deep um, mushrooms to like help him get through his problems. And I just don't know, like, are these people working for Vought? Like, to, with some kind of agenda? Or are they truly trying to help him get back into the seven? And if so, why? Like, what's the benefit for those, like, this th therapist um, and this arrow guy to help him? I just, I'm just kind of lost still, like, what's happening there? All right, so now we have Vought finding out First of all, we have we get a little bit more of Edgar here. So Edgar's the um I'm definitely gonna be his name too. Barisi? No, it's not his name. That's not it. Hold on. So the guy that plays the CEO of Vought, right? Bear with me. This uh pulling this menu up for actors is not it's very touchy. Okay, so we have his name is Giancarlo Esposito. Um he plays Stan Edgar, CEO of Vought. Um, and he's also, of course, in Breaking Bad, um, Gus Fring. He plays a general in The Mandalorian, which I'm excited to see him back in that. Um, this guy's a huge actor, and he's he's the CEO of Vought. So now he's he's talking with his team. Here we are at 30 minutes, 22 seconds, if you're following along, um, about this Compound V that's gotten out. 
all right, now on top of that, they're finding out that um, the boys have been identified out in the water, out in this boat, and we're flashing back to them now. So Grace is saying, like, okay, we can't come to you anymore. You just crashed a police helicopter. So this deal has now been <laughs> butchered. Man, I, I, that word comes up a lot. And it's probably just because his name's Billy Butcher. Um, so she says, you got to come meet us at this place now to do the exchange. And it's like, all right, gosh, here we go. Um, and on top of this, you know, Vought has now found out that they're out there because, because of this helicopter, they're like, okay, well, something's going to happen. News is getting around that Billy Butcher and his crew have been identified. Right. Um, in this scene, we get a little bit more of, um, so we're still on the boat. We got Huey and he's calling and leaving Starlight another voicemail. If you haven't picked up on it by now, they're communicating via like burner phones to stay in contact. It's apparently, you know, very dangerous. All eyes on them. He's most wanted. She's a member of the seven. Just asking for trouble. And he's basically reconfessing his love for her here. So, I, you know, if you're like me, you're wondering, like, where do they stand? Um, and he brings up that Billy Joel music video and it talks about like your second wind in life. Right. And like right when you think you're giving up, you get your second wind. So he's telling her that you're essentially my second wind. I'm still in love with you. Um, you've got to be careful. And that he's like just terrified for her because she's in the middle of all this madness and Homelander's a true psycho. Um, really sweet scene, but like, and I feel like we do need something because otherwise, if you if you don't give us a little bit more of this, it seems like the love interest maybe is not important. But like, you've brought it back to the forefront here, so um, I mean, I'm still intrigued. I don't know if I'm necessarily rooting for them two to get together. I think part of me is because Huey's just like this regular guy and. And she's a set. She's a member of the seven. She's really cool and smart, even though in this episode, this season so far, she's definitely playing by more of those Vought rules. Right. Like we know she's undercover, but she's also leaning in a lot and kind of being getting kind of numb to what's happening around her. We are seeing that, too. So excited to see where they take that relationship this season. Taking a drink of water real quick. But right now we're back in um, seven tower. And we're at, uh, I'm not going to pause it. We're just going to keep it going. But we're at 3312, if you're following along. And take a quick sip. All right. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, what's happening here is um, Edgar, CEO of Vought, is now talking to all of the seven. And we found out a couple things during this talk. A-Train speaks up and says, we didn't know about this compound V. That's his way of telling Starlight, like, okay, I'll keep this quiet. And he says, okay, well, right now we're going to focus on these super ter terrorists. Homelander says super villain. So he's been really on this thing, right, with um, what you call bad guys. And Homelander is saying, like, you, you, call, them, you call them super villains. <laughs> He wants he wants supervillains to be the PR word instead of like super terrorists, anything like that. Um, he's basically ordering the seven here to go get the boys and clean up this mess. And Maeve says, you know, it's not our problem. A train is like, why well, we got to clean up your mess? Or, you know, I think Maeve says that. Homelander makes a power move here. He says, you know, we're the seven. We're still the world's mightiest heroes. Um, he just got this big speech from Edgar about, you know, being like, we are Vought. He's like, we're not Vought. We are superheroes. Compound V doesn't change any of that. And he says, we're a family. And we're going to take care of each other. And we're going to go take care of this business right now. This is why this guy that plays Homelander is so good. Because... He gives these speeches and they sound so authentic. They sound like he's, he actually means it. And, but you just know that he's a crazy psycho um, and that he will turn on a dime and kill you immediately. Uh, but he's basically, he's calling out Edgar here and saying like, we're talent. You can't live without us. You know, you might make money in other places, but obviously you need us because you're in this room telling us you need us right now. 
And then you get Stormfront kind of smiling at what Homelander's saying, like, okay, wait a minute. They've kind of had a um a conflict the whole first three episodes. So like you got this new Stormfront girl, and she's trying to be the new uh head honcho in town. Well, now they actually have their first like kind of real bit of dialogue where they're on the same page. And he says, see, you haven't heard everything I have to say. And she's like, well, I, I kind of liked that. So dangerous, right? We'll see if like these two end up hitting it off. Um, You know, because you're kind of hoping that she like comes around and is like a good person. I say come around just like you just we don't really know anything about her. So it's like, is she a good person? Is she a bad person? She obviously has attitude and isn't afraid to say what she feels. Here we are, though, guys, this is where the episode takes off, you know, for the the final um, final act, as they say, we're on the boat. Billy and the team are trying to make it to this offshore place to trade the soup terrorists. And here come sharks and dolphins out of nowhere. You know, they're attacking the boat. And this is where the therapist and the arrow guy were helping out the deep is she came to him and said, here's your opportunity to get back into the seven. Because they're out on water, <laughs> you know, like you've been waiting for your chance. This is what you need to do. And well, here he is. We haven't seen him yet, but we know it's him, right? Because it's it's sea animals. The boat is sinking. Thankfully, they have like a backup boat on the back. Sharks everywhere. Sharks all over the place. Their fins you know, going through the water. They're shooting at them with machine guns. <laughs> and here we go. So as they're running from these sharks, they're headed toward the shore. And it's like, okay, here we go. There's a storm drain. We can just put it in there. Well, coming up beside them, here on their left, is a giant whale. (laughs) And it comes flying out of the water, and the deep is on it, and he looks great. He's riding it like, picture what you would like, how you would ride ride like a rhinoceros. Um, You know, if you just watch Black Panther, they ride those rhinoceros. That's what he looks like. And now he's got in front of him. He's standing up like a hero. Billy's headed toward the boat and he punches the gas. <laughs> oh, God. The deep looks terrified and they're going to definitely hit this whale. And whale, we'll see what happens. Sorry for that one. Inside the whale, through the whale they go. Blood and whale carcass everywhere. Um, and the boat's like literally inside the whale. Oh my gosh, what a scene. I mean, this is crazy. This whale looks so good. Billy comes crawling out of it. He's covered in in blood. Um, I mean, they're legit inside of this thing. Uh, we get a diabolical line from Billy. You know, that's something you're going to be looking for all season. You know, we love we love the little one-liners from Billy. Um, everybody seems to be okay except for Huey. So Huey is inside this whale and he's like laying next to the heart and this giant, there's a giant like heart next to him, like still hooked up to like, it looks like an aorta, you know, vein, like arteries and veins. And it's just pumping. Like, it's like, it's like the whale still like slowly dying. Well, Billy comes in and says like, let's go. We got to get out of here. We got to run right now. Soups are on the way, which he's totally right. Like Homelander's coming. We know that Valt knows about this. I mean, the seven, the full power of the seven are about to come. Like, that's terrifying. Um, And that's something this show just does continuously is like they really do a good job of letting you know, like, how terrified people truly are of these superheroes because they really can't do anything they want. Um, At the end of the day, though, Huey does not get out of the whale. He's like, I'm done. I'm defeated. Mother's Milk is telling Billy, we cannot leave this kid, man. And Billy goes off with Frenchie, uh, Kamiko, and her brother. They go into the storm drain, and Mother's Milk goes back in to get Huey. So I'm just going to breeze through it because Huey obviously doesn't like leave the show here. But he really, it's showing how broken he is. Um, and without like a solid support structure around him, solid team, you know, um, people having his back, uh, he's just, he's struggling. And Mother's Milk is just, he, this, you know, we got a taste of this in season one. Um, you know, Mother's Milk was working at, I, I don't know exactly where. It was either like a juvenile correction center or like a boy's home or 
I, I don't remember exactly, but he was helping young people, you know, helping people that were like thinking they had nowhere to go. Um, and he gets Huey to come out of the whale, obviously. <laughs> Just a funny sentence. So now we're in the drains. And we don't know exactly what's going to happen next, but we know that they're still trying to find the okay so billy just points it to a sign and says they're trying to find this grace lady to make this trade right there this is where i'm kind of confused too because it's like i guess they tied up kimiko's brother again like is he going willingly i don't think so i think they're probably still got him tied up um and this is where mother's milk has a come to jesus talk of sorts with billy about like his relationship with huey he says you have got to look after this kid and no. And Billy says, no, you know, I, I don't want anything. I'm the kid. I tried. I've tried to do my thing. He doesn't he doesn't like me. And this is where I uh, Mother's Milk is a really cool analogy. I liked this. This is where he says you need to have Huey be your canary of sorts, um, meaning that Billy is so dark and he's so driven by his mission that he will leave anyone behind. We know that. But Mother's Milk is saying you need somebody to keep you in check because you you go so far sometimes that you need somebody to show you where the light is and when you've gone too far. And Huey is that light. You know, he's like this good, regular person that can keep a balance of all this. Honestly, at the end of the day, like shit that's going on around him. People just dying left and right. Um, so you give him a little talk and Billy kind of shakes it off, right? He's like, he doesn't want to hear it. And Huey is here trailing at the end of the crew um, and is really, you know, definitely struggling. Okay, guys, getting toward the end here, getting toward the end of the episode here. Um, fun scene. We get all the seven show up and it's, they find the deep with this whale just massacred on the side of the water. Right. Um, the deep hugs Homelander is like, I can't believe this. This is crazy. Starlight is looking scared. She's like, Oh no. Like, if they're here, like, where are they? How is this going to go? Um, and the deep's like, I, I would have got him, but I had to take care of Lucy. And Lucy's the whale. <laughs> um, Starlight's also pissed at, that the deep is here. Because, again, remember their relationship, right? This is where we kind of get a reminder if you forgot that he sexually harassed her in ep- uh, season one, episode one. He's been paying for it ever since. And now he's... He gives a half ass attempt at like apologizing and saying, like, I'm going to be, you know, do better and be better. And I hope that you can forgive me one day. Who knows? I could see like maybe an arc here in this season where these two maybe work it out and maybe he does have some growth. Um, But right now he's just so shallow and so just like, I don't know. I don't know the right term, but he's just really struggling. You know, he's not he's not suited really for the real world. We'll see what happens with those two. All right, now we get Stormfront sticking up for Homelander's plan and saying, listen, we'll deal with the deep later. We got to go in and get these people. Uh, They leave the deep behind. He doesn't get to go in, but we get a nice little. uh, A little spotlight on again, Homelander and Stormfront's relationship, because this is something that we do not know what it's going to be. We don't know if they're going to be buddies, if they're going to be enemies. We don't know if she's a good guy, bad guy. Um, a good person, bad person, but in terms of like superhero talk, um, and then, um, Homelander. So he, right before he goes into the tunnel with the rest of the seven, he gives one final blow to the deep sea ego and says, Hey, your gill showing cover that up. It's gross. And this is after we've seen him make tremendous strides of like coming to terms with his gills and, and looking different. And it just brings him right back down, right? The deep's like right back down. All right, so we're back in the tunnels. The seven are now looking for these for the for the team. And you're like, okay, well, they're the seven. They're gonna find them in no time. However, A Train, their speedster, you know, it's a superhero term for for those out there you might not know. He's a he can run really fast. He's trying to run the tunnels, but he's having more of his heart palpitations. He's having like another like mini heart attack. And now the worst thing that could possibly happen to this guy, Homelander shows up. Says, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Homelander can see right past it. Just goes, okay. I know you will. Sure. This is where I wondered, does Homelander have super speed? 
there's been some talks about like maybe you know it'd be cool if like Soulwind and Superman Fox are essentially the same powers. Um, but in either way, we don't see it in this episode. It was just something that I thought of as a superhero fan. I was like, is he gonna run around down here or what? Um, okay, so now we find out the seven are gaining on them. Huey spots a flashlight, um, and they're they're catching up. Um, and this is where we're approaching like the final confrontations here. Like, where is this gonna land? So Huey looks around the corner. Who does he find? Of course. There's a one out of seven chance, right? She's on her own. It's Starlight. It's the first time I've seen each other. She's shocked. She's got the glowy eyes. He's smiling. You got my message. She, before he gets a word out, blasts him with her Starlight powers. Still on, you know, energy. And Homelander comes out of the background. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, she saw Homelander, even though we didn't, she saw Homelander in the back. And for her, she knew that she had to show that she was going to attack Huey and that she's not working with him at all because it's the only way to keep her cover, right? Well, Homelander, you would think this might be enough. With Homelander, it's never enough, right? He's going to push you as far as it can go because that's who he is. He's, again... Keep saying this word, but sociopath. Like he likes to see what he can make happen around him. Um, so he tells her, you know, good job. You pushed him down. Kill him right now. She plays every card she has left here not to do it. I mean, she says he's wanted. Like, what are you talking about? Shouldn't we take him to the police? Homelander answers very intelligently, very calmly. Yes, he is wanted. Yes, we should take him to jail. Kill him. <laughs> great. I mean, again, this guy's just so great. Like, just gives you chills. So she has her hands up. It's like, make or break it. Billy and the crew are watching from behind the corner. All right. Homelander, she doesn't do it yet. Homelander says, all right, if you don't do this, if you don't kill Huey, I'm going to kill both of you. Billy's watching. Mother's Milk's there, Frenchie, Kim, Kimiko, her brother. Got some nice music fading in here, too. It's like, oh, my gosh, her eyes are lighting up. Her hands are lighting up. She's going to do it. She's going to kill him. And then we get a oi, cunt, from Billy Butcher. William. That's what Homelander calls Billy. He says, William. He's like, wow, uh, you're here. I was with your wife this morning. Had, a, had some pancakes. Just dishing some shade right away. Um, and here we are. This is where it's all coming together. I mean, Billy's looking at Homelander. What's going to happen here? Oh, Kimiko's brother. They untied him. Uses his powers. Opens up the ground underneath Homelander. Homelander flies and then brings down the whole ceiling on top of Homelander. The only ones left standing. We got Huey. We got Starlight. And then, of course, like the boys in the team. Kimiko says, please don't leave and he runs he, he has a cool thing where he puts like a rock in front of him with telekinesis jumps out of the hole he just made in the ceiling homelander's underground i mean he can't be that far gone and this is where we get the big moment from billy and huey he says come on we can't let this guy get out of here and get us and puts his hand out to help him up and huey says like he doesn't say anything, but you can see it in his face. Like I'm back. Let's go. And that's all he needed. You know, just a little bit of support from his, his teammate and a little leadership. All right. So we got Kimiko and um, her brother out on the street. And we get Stormfront. She electrocutes both of them right into some folks apartment. And this is where we're going to get her powers and exactly who she is. Right. She kicks. Kimiko down, electrocutes the guy, uh, her brother, through another wall. This family's screaming, they're crying. It's just a dad and her kid's mom. She kills them. She kills the dad. The girl is screaming and crying. She turns around. She's like evil in her face. You can see it just so disgusted and annoyed with this person crying. Kills those humans. Now she's chasing down Kimiko's brother. And here we go, Kimiko. Gets a couple good hits in, slams her against two walls and throws her. And now they're on the run. They're going to grow up to the roof. 
and Stormfront, we're finding out a little bit more about her powers here. One, she definitely has like full on storm powers. Two, she doesn't give a shit about anybody. She just threw some random guy out a window on the way upstairs. We get this nice shot from outside the building of explosions happening. We get fire. We get lightning, like purple lightning seems to be like her theme stormfront. And now we're on the roof, right? It's going to be these two versus her. One, we've seen that she can like take a punch stormfront. Like doesn't seem like she's seems like she's like super strong and like tough, like Homelander. Kimiko's brother just ran and jumped to another roof. And now we got now we got Stormfront versus Kimiko. Doesn't look good. Kimiko's on the ground. Brother's watching from afar. Stormfront looks like she's gonna try to like snap off Kimiko's neck. She's got her hanging off the top of a building. Like, I'm gonna this is where we're like, is she gonna kill Kimiko right in front of us? No, the brother steps in and says, I'm gonna save you. She lightning bolts Kimiko hard this time, knocks her out over on the side. She has his hands, the brother's hands, rips him off from inside out and says, like, you can't do any more hand magic because your hands are gone. And he's just sitting here with no hands ripped off. And it's like, what's going to happen now? She's got a hold of his head. She's obviously, like, choking him looking him in the eye. Kimiko's crawling out like, can I get there? Can I save my brother? He says, she, Stormfront says, open your eyes. I like to see when the light goes out. So, and here we go. And she snaps his neck. Okay. She, and calls him a fucking yellow bastard. Like yellow, like an old term, like racist, like slang. Um, so I was reeling from this the first time. Here I am watching it again. I'm really again. Homelander's here. He shows up, but we just, you know, he's upset because he said, I get to make the kill. She said, you snooze, you lose. Um, so a couple things on Stormfront. Evil. I'm going to say, I mean, I'm, she's just murdered a family downstairs. She threw some innocent guy out a window and then she ripped off a guy's hands and then broke his neck after she ripped off his hands and said, I like the light going out of your eyes and called him a yellow bastard. And then told now is telling Stone, uh, Homelander, you know, suck it. I'm going to do whatever I want. And that's the, that's just going to be the case. Um, so now Kimiko, you know, we'll, we'll get there. I think it's like kind of the last scene here, but revenge story, just a little foreshadowing. I think that that's what we're going to get here. Leaving episode three, at least for Kimiko, right? She just watched her brother get her, his head snapped and his hand ripped off by this lady. Um, now we're getting a press conference. Edgar, CEO of Vought, is saying that the focus now will be learning the truth about Compound V as we are conducting this robust investigation. Okay, so they're going to be looking into this from the public's point of view to paint whatever narrative they need to have. Something we didn't talk about at all, but he did mention to Homelander that he knew, Edgar knew, knows, that um, that Homelander is the one that created all these super terrorists and distributed it, the Compound V everywhere. So we know that. But, like, what else will happen with this Compound V? Like, will it um, – like, what kind of story are they going to paint? What kind, How this will affect the story? How this? How will this affect – what the boys are trying to do with finding Billy's wife and being on the run. Um, but I, one thing that he highlights Edgar here at this speech is that we need heroes more than ever. So one thing's very crystal clear. They are not going to ever stop with superheroes. And as a matter of fact, they're kind of doubling down. They're saying we need our heroes more than ever, regardless, you know, regardless of this compound V is real or not, these problems exist, which, I mean, how do you argue with that? You know, that's what's that's what's on the news. Um, and then at the very end here. Stormfront gets the credit for killing the super terrorist, which happens to be Kimiko's brother. Um, so why that's on the news, we'll get more of that in a minute. We get Billy and Huey having a nice moment where they look at each other. They both understand where they stand. And they both understand that this is not over. Um, so we know that 
you know, we can kind of see Huey breathe for the first time. And he says here, like, what's next? I think is what he says. So he just, just, just showing you that Billy's that Huey is making progress from down on the dumps. Episode one of season two to like, hopefully by episode four, the next episode next week or this week, um, you know, he'll have like some muster and, and we'll be less, honestly, less sad. You know, we don't want him to be sad the whole season. Uh, we get, we get, um, Stormfront on the, on the screen and she's playing the exact game that Homelander's always played using like his words almost of the real heroes are the people behind me, you know, the people in arms, the police officers, and they are looking at each other. Homelander, Stormfront, not cool. Like remember when they were cool for a hot second? Homelander looks like he's about to just kill her. And I like this at the end. They're just, it's reporters going storm front over here, over here, over here. She's not even saying anything. She's just looking around, letting them all look at her very much a very much a narcissist move, very much a, a Homelander type move and Homelander knows it and he doesn't like it. That's it. Season three credits are rolling. Um, last thing we get is Kimiko's face tight frame. So obviously, like I said, setting up that re- re- revenge story. Um, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll come back and wrap up uh, this episode of mostly superheroes, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back and we have just wrapped up um, the episode three of the boys live watch. That's what I'm going to call it. Probably the title of the episode. Um, and I mean, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, what about you guys? I, I want to hear from you. This is something that we want to start trying doing. I say we, what I want to start doing a little bit more often is is trying these live watches um i think it's a great way to you know you get you get my raw honest take on the show it helps me remember kind of what happened in previous episodes and now specifically for the boys i think this is going to help us um do these weekly reviews i think this is a great way to do it i'll watch it myself on my own without like working right um but then i'll watch it again with you guys and we'll just do it live and maybe what i'd like to do and like to try is, you know, I'm recording this today. We're not actually live per se. It's live for me to watch it. But, you know, what I mean is I'd like to do it actually live via YouTube and our Instagram channel. So maybe, you know, let us know if that's something you guys think that you're interested in. Um, you know, I haven't plugged it yet this episode, but, you know, check out our website. You can check out this episode, other episodes, and also contact us. Also get links to our Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube channel. Um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, what I'd like to do is do that like live watch where we schedule in advance. And I've talked about this on some other episodes, but just talking about the boys specifically, they are doing these weekly releases. So, I mean, I think it's a good way for us all to stay on top of what's happening. I'll give you a recap so you can kind of understand what's maybe some questions you have about plot points and whatnot. But just wrapping up, you know, these first three episodes of season three of the boys, my take. I'm in. I'm so excited. I think that they're uh, these it's going great so far. Um, you know, Billy Butcher, I'll just kind of run down some characters here. Some of the things I'm most excited to see this season. Butcher's just a great character. I mean, this actor is so great. You know, he's he's in a I forget his name that plays Billy Butcher. Um, but he's also uh, he plays what's his name on Thor Ragnarok, like hell is right hand man. Um, just a funny actor. And he brings a great, great tone and atmosphere to this show um you haven't really ever seen a character like this you've seen some kind of like it right he's kind of got like that han solo thing going on like i'm an outlaw renegade i say i'm a good guy but i do questionable things but you are fighting super villains Th- that's really what's so great about this show at the end of the day is you don't exactly know who the um bad guy is i mean there's a lot of bad guys it's almost trying to find out, like, are there any good guys left? And I feel like that's what, like, you're trying to, you know, you, that's Huey, that's Starlight, even Frenchie, who's, even though he's like a, one of these thugs or people that Billy's worked with for years, we get to see these internal struggles of people of like, what truly is, does it mean to be a good person? Um, and whenever the whole establishment's against you, and not only is you have the, the confines of government and structure. But now on top of that, you have superheroes that are bad. You know, you got Homelander. That's just like this crazy person. Um, I can't wait to see what happens with Homelander and how he deals with his son. 
and what happens with that storyline. Cause you got Billy being the kind of the third wheel in there. Um, you know, are they going to escape from that place? Are they going to get going somewhere? What's going to happen with Stormfront, Stormfront and Homelander? Again, are they going to have like more bashing? It looks like it. They left episode three not liking each other, or at least Homelander throwing a pretty dirty look to Stormfront. Um, What's going to happen with the Deep? I think he's one of the best characters. I love when they just break totally away from all the storylines that are happening and we just get to see what he's up to. Um, I think that, that that actor is doing a good job and I'm intrigued to see what he does. Um, Starlight, you know, again, she's struggling herself. I feel like she's having like that internal battle of trying to be a good person, trying to be a good superhero. But again, I mentioned this earlier in the episode. She's really um, starting to play by that that vote that bought game, you know, being undercover, being one of the seven. And I think you can only do that so much fake without it having some kind of effect on you. And it's going to, you know, it's going to make her either more numb to what she's doing to where she's more likely to look the other way. I'm sure we're going to get some of that where Huey, you know, calls her out about something maybe and says like, you know, what are you doing? I'm sure we'll get that in an episode. And then Kimiko, you know, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not skipping over characters by any means. I'm running through as they naturally fall into my head. Um, but I'm excited to see her revenge story on Stormfront. I think that this will be just a good back and forth. Great arc and a lot of episodes left. So who knows where that'll go. Um, but I like her. I think she's super powerful. Kimiko, I mean. Um, so we'll see what happens with her. Um, and then, you know, the boys themselves, we got Frenchie and Mother's Milk that are just trying to survive and get some kind of, you know, Mother's Milk wants to get back to his family. We'll see what happens there. Mother's Milk's just the wildest name. I'm just going to say that. I feel like I've been saying it the whole episode. Like, it's not strange. It's, yeah, it's strange. It's a strange name. Um, So, yeah, man, we'll, we'll keep it going. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed yourselves. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. I've been so pumped to talk about this show. I've been talking about talking about it for weeks. Um, so more to come on the boys, probably some kind of form of weekly, you know, watch like this, either a recap, a live watch, something of the, or again, where me and my friends talk about it coming up guys. Um, next will probably be in terms of like deep, di- deep dives. I've been talking about it, but it's on my list this week is doom patrol season two. I've already done season one. So season two is next. I'm creeping up on about halfway through. So Honestly, I don't know. I might watch the whole thing and give you a full recap. Um, Part of me would like to maybe do like five and five, but I feel like why break it up? Just do it all in one. So let me figure that out. But either way, you know, if you haven't watched Doom Patrol, get that going. Um, Talked about it in the last episode, episode six um, or episode seven. Forgive me if you haven't seen it yet, but Supernatural, the final episodes are coming. Um, If anything, we'll just do either a quick recap on that. We might just do a whole live watch of the final episode. I think that'd be kind of cool, right? The final, if you're a supernatural fan on CW, um, this is the last time we're going to see Sam and Dean Winchester, um, um, you know, being hunters and well, we'll, we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen in the, in the final season, but that's coming up soon. Um, and then as according to Disney plus and, and the folks over at Disney, like we still should have some Marvel shows happening in the next few months, but to be honest, they've been really quiet. Um, I haven't really heard much, you know, you hear news of things happening like for future films and whatnot. And um, there's obviously been a lot of news here lately in the, in the MCU world, but in terms of like the shows, you know, Loki, Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, um, you know, there's all these shows that I would love to do some stuff like this and hopefully I'll be able to give you some weekly recaps of those shows, but I just haven't heard about when they're going to be happening. So we'll keep an eye on that. Keep you posted. But in the meantime, guys, um, please check out our website. You know, if you're looking for more content, keep you entertained in between episodes. There's a lot there, mostly superheroes.com. Um, it's a beautiful site, put a lot of work into it. And uh, we, we love it. I spend a lot of time there myself just because it looks so good. Um, so go check it out. And thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Plenty more to come on Mostly Superheroes. We'll see you next time.